And again, if you're a novice investor, don't put all your money in one stock because this is a highly volatile space right now. And this short term pain will happen in this industry. So don't get scared. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So let me start today's video by asking you a very simple question. The question is that by how much do you think FANG, FANG stocks have grown in the last five years? So FANG is Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. So by how much have these stocks grown in the last five years? So type out your answers in the comment section and here is some data for you. So Facebook and Amazon have seen an increase of 185% and 500% respectively. Apple and Alphabet have grown by approximately 175% and Netflix has grown by 450%. So almost roughly speaking, in the last five years, these stocks have roughly tripled, right? Now you might say, Akshat, these are like American companies. Why should we bother? Even if you check the data for technology companies based in India, for example, TCS is one of the biggest tech firms in India. It has grown from 1230 levels from approximately 1200 levels five years ago to approximately 3300 levels as we are sitting today. So in five years, again, the Indian technology stocks have also tripled, so to say. Now, why am I telling you this story? The story has a very important lesson. The lesson being that there are certain sectors which exhibit really fast growth in a decade's time. So last decade, it was tech. Maybe this decade also it will be tech, but there is additional one sector which I am betting quite heavily on, which is called as EV or electric vehicle sector. So on this video, I'm going to cover the ins and outs of EV sector and I'm going to show you how to make investments in the EV space by showing my small case and showing my individual stock picking strategies as well. So stay tuned on this video and please like and comment. Please like and comment this video because it would indicate to me that you really enjoy this type of case study content and I would continue to shoot it. So let me cover three specific points on this video. First, let me walk you through the growth potential of electric vehicles industry. Second, let me cover the scope of this industry in India and what is the primary value chain, where the value will be unlocked. And third and finally, let me show you the investment scope of this industry and I will share my portfolio of what specific firms have I invested in in the EV sector and which firms will I be investing in going forward. So in order to assess the growth potential of the EV industry in general all across the world, you need to consider two specific points. So the first point is that are the external conditions conducive for EV sector to grow? What do I mean by that? For example, you might have heard that back in the 70s when the development of computer happened, the cost used to be very high, right? One MB of RAM used to cost insane amount of money. But as the industry progressed, the cost of those factors started going down. Silicon Valley developed. A lot of investment started pouring in into tech and computer-based companies. A bunch of positive external developments happened that really propelled the technology and the software industry. So similarly, we are sitting now in 2020s. You need to ask yourself the question that, hey, do I see this EV industry getting conducive help from external factors. There are a lot of positive external factors at play here. First and foremost, majority of the corporations are becoming more socially and sustainability focused. They are following something called as ESG norms. Very recently, when Elon Musk dumped bitcoins, he gave the criterion that, hey, these bitcoins extract a lot of energy and therefore I am dumping bitcoins because in the mining of bitcoins, a lot of energy is spent and I don't want to get into all these environmental destruction. So he went out of Bitcoin. His reason for ditching Bitcoins is up for debates. But the point that I'm trying to enforce here is very simple. That majority of these Fortune 500 companies are becoming ESG, which is environmental, social and governance focused. So they want to invest in initiatives that promote the sustainability of the world. Now we know for a fact that non-renewable sources of energy, for example, oil, wood, etc. These are not sustainable. They cause a lot of damage to the environment. So companies, governments, even multilateral organizations are pouring in a lot of resources in terms of exploring alternate sources of energy and promoting sources that do not cause pollution. So from this end, there is a lot of push in terms of developing the entire mobility system. Now you might be observing examples of this happening already. For example, you might have recently seen even in your city that e-rickshaws have become very big, 
right? And this is a very, very recent development. This has happened in the last five to seven years that the e-rickshaw industry in India has started to become really big. It has started replacing a lot of conventional sources of transportation like tempos, autos, etc. And now people are adopting e-rickshaws, right? So that's a step in a positive direction, which you and I are clearly witnessing. Now, even speaking from a government's point of view, even the government policies are somewhat promoting the EV market. For example, if you take a look at European Union, EU, so what they have started doing is that they have started levying a lot of taxes on conventional sources of transportation. If your vehicle is extremely heavy, then you will have to levy heavy taxes. Now I will link a study here and I will flash that part of the study to support this argument. So please take a look. Now, whether we look at it from a trend perspective that, hey, whether oil usage is going up or down, B, if you look at it from a government's push perspective, whether they are supporting EV policies or not, or whether we look at it from a corporate's point of view, whether they are supporting ESG norms or not. The point is that EV industry is getting a lot of external support, which forms the right set of conditions for it to grow. In order to clearly assess the potential of the EV industry, it is also very important to assess whether or not EV industry can grow profitably, right? This is a very important point because there are a lot of products and industry where the growth happens, but the growth does not happen in a profitable manner. Would EV industry fall in such a category? My answer is no. And I will give you the reasons why. So there is a mass adoption of electric vehicles, be it electric bikes or electric scooters or electric cars. It is already happening at scale. Now, here is a study that was done by Niti Aayog which published a report called as India's Electronic Mobility Transformation. So it estimates that by the year 2030, the EV sales penetration in India would stand at 70% for commercial cars, 30% for private cars, 40% for buses and 80% for two and three wheelers, right? So this is a very important estimate that has been given by Niti Aayog. Very, very important for you to consider because this really depicts that in which direction people are going to buy their vehicles. Are they going to continue buying their traditional vehicles or would they shift to these new age vehicles which are called as EV? So it is clearly happening. That shift is clearly happening and, and Niti Aayog has categorically pinned that down. There was another study that was published by Auto News in Europe and it categorically says that by the mid decade, EV sector profitability will match internal combustion engine based vehicles. Now, this is a very big statement to make because so far for the last 120 years, we have been using conventional sources of energy to drive automobiles as we are seeing even now, right? Now, the profitability over these 120 years since the Ford invention happened, it had improved in these IC engine, internal combustion engine based vehicles, which are traditional vehicles. The profitability has gone up because of the fact that engine efficiency improved, manufacturing efficiency improved, bunch of other efficiencies came in. So the same life cycle will pay out for EVs also. Now, this is a very big statement that by the mid decade, the profitability of EVs will match that of internal combustion engine based vehicles. This is a very big statement because going forward by the year 2025 onwards, it is only a matter of time that EVs will become more and more cost efficient. Even their battery lives will improve. New developments will happen. New R&D budgets will come in. So a bunch of developments will keep on happening and people or industries who are participating in the EV industries will actually make massive amount of profits going forward. Now, since the growth potential of EV industry is massive, people are going to buy EVs and companies are going to get more and more efficient in terms of driving their profitability. So it is just a matter of time that India will benefit from this revolution. So let us analyze the EV industry in India. Where does EV industry stands and where can it go from here on? So first and foremost, you can categorize the EV industry in India into three different buckets. First would be brands that actually sell right, which are putting their logo and stickers on different things. For example, you have two wheelers and four wheelers. So which of these companies and brands are supporting and giving you the final product? So that is the first category. The second category would be called as OEMs or original equipment manufacturers. So in order to build an electronic vehicle, what do you need? You need a bunch of things. You need an engine, you need a steering wheel, you need a bunch of different things. So OEMs, original equipment manufacturers are the ones who actually build these individual parts, which are eventually assembled by someone else and then brands put their stickers and sell it. So this second category is called as OEMs. And third is the overall infrastructure. So once you have an EV in your hands, what are you going to do with it? You have to go to its charging port to get the charging done. You need some kind of permit. So there is an entire infrastructure around it. So this is where you can bifurcate the EV industry. So three parts. One is brands, which eventually sell you stuff. OEMs who actually build the individual components. 
And third and finally, we have the entire infrastructure in which government, private players, startups participate to build this entire infrastructure which supports the EV industry in totality. So let's go through each of these points one by one very quickly. Now, if you take at major brands in India, there are companies like Bajaj, there are companies like Hero Motor Crop. These are brands that are trying to participate in the EV industry and launching their own set of vehicles. Now, there is no point in taking a look at the current portfolio because as we speak, these companies are coming up with newer and newer products. But we need to be aware that which companies are in the two-wheeler and four-wheeler manufacturing space when it comes to EVs. So these could be literally any company. So Tata is also doing it. Bajaj is also doing it. Maruti is also getting into the game. Mahindra and Mahindra is also doing it. Now, these all the traditional players who used to manufacture traditional cars and bikes are now getting into the EV space. Now many international players, for example, Tesla recently entered the Indian market. Tesla is already selling high-end EV cars in US. So it might enter the space and similarly other international big manufacturers and big brands might come into the Indian market and would try to dominate the space because this is a super lucrative space. Now the second component which is called as OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturers, this is where the major game lies for the EV players. Now there was a study that was done by Center for Energy Finance and there are some important considerations and I will flash this table in front of you. It's written very minutely so I'll read out the important points from it. It will help you understand more about the OEM manufacturers in India, what are their profit margins like and where it is within this OEM bucket, there is major scope for improvement, development and growth. So let's look at the EV component manufacturing sector in slightly more detail. Now first and foremost, if you need to get an EV done, be it a bike, be it a car, you need a bunch of components. So the first component that you generally need is called as a battery pack. Now battery is one of the most critical components for any EV and it costs approximately 40% of the entire amount. So this is a big cost. This also means that the selling price of this particular component would be very high. And if you are actually making investments in battery companies in India, it might be a good bet. So I'll talk about this in section three. Please watch it till the end. But an important point to note down is that battery is one of the key components in India. There are a lot of problems when it comes to Indian battery manufacturers. For example, they are not doing high end efficient manufacturing bunch of regulatory related issues, bunch of issues around procuring raw material. Those issues are there. I'm not saying that those issues will not be there. But this is a growing industry. So I'm hopeful that the government in conjunction with the private sector will be able to sort out these issues. But the important point to note is that the battery segment of EV is very, very important because it contributes 40% of the entire cost. Then we look at electronic motors, power electronics, vehicle integration, which ranges from 10 to 20%. And these are other important components that need to be kept in mind. Now, the key takeaway from this segment is very, very simple. Now, if you look at the OEM component manufacturing, then this needs to actually play up for the EV industry to become big. Because what happens is this, for example, let's say that if you are talking about a traditional vehicle, let's assume that we are trying to build a Ferrari in India. Now, why can't we build a Ferrari in India? The reason is very simple that the OEM for Ferrari, the engine is designed in Italy. Now, some other components are designed in Germany. Now, if these components keep on getting designed in Europe and bring those components to India and manufacture it, there will be a lot of import duty. There will be a lot of skilled manpower required. There will be a bunch of other issues, right? So the bottom line is that since EV is such a big opportunity for the governments, the governments are pouring in insane amount of money in terms of building up this industry. When I say that the government is looking to build up this industry, where do you think that they would start? They would start by supporting the OEMs. Hey, now, here is a very important research statement that I want to read out. So it says that there are multiple challenges in terms of manufacturing batteries. And there is a national mission on this front. It is called as National Mission on Transformative Mobility and Battery Storage. So even the government realizes that, hey, we need to build up our OEM system in India in order to create and structure the EV industry. Now, in order to support OEMs, what do we need? We need to get really efficient in terms of building up batteries. Now to support that they have started a national mission. Now this is a step in the right direction and it shows there will be a lot of investments that will be made by the government going forward. Now what else is government doing? Now in order to support battery production, government is also running production link incentive scheme for ACC battery storage manufacturing which will incentivize domestic production units. So all in all government is putting in a lot of efforts in terms of building up the OEMs and a lot of support and investment will go to them. Now, very quickly touching upon how the government is building infrastructure. Infrastructure is a very key issue when it comes to EVs and government at the back end needs to develop the infrastructure 
pass on the regulation, pass on the benefits, give a lot of incentives to people to come and invest in the EV space. So what is the government doing? So if we take a look at the state mandates, government of Karnataka has introduced a comprehensive EV policy. Tamil Nadu has come up with another supply ecosystem where they are trying to build OEMs. There is a lot of administrative and investor related support that has been given by the Tamil Nadu government as well. So government is also proactive in terms of building the backend infrastructure, supporting OEMs. This industry is already growing. So all in all, the situation looks conducive for accelerating the next leg of the growth. Which brings me to the final part of this video that hey, so since this industry is growing, so tell us where should we invest and what are some of the key stocks that we should look at. So if you're looking to invest in the EV sector, there are essentially two ways in which you can do this. So the first strategy is for beginners and intermediate level users and intermediate level investors. So you can go to small case and look for a small case called as electric mobility. Now here, if you go to this small case, you can check the stocks and weights and you can actually look at different OEMs, different manufacturers, different brands and try to see whether or not you are satisfied with this and make the investment. For example, I'm personally investing in a company called as Amara Raja Batteries Limited. So I bought this stock a few days ago and I'm running it at a loss and I'm showing you my loss portfolio. Now, please remember that I am a long term investor in the EV space. I'm keeping at least a 10 year horizon. This loss, I'm certain will turn into a massive profit. So this company I've already invested in. Now, there are other battery manufacturers that you can pick. And again, if you're a novice investor, don't put all your money in one stock because this is a highly volatile space right now. And this short term pain will happen in this industry. So don't get scared. A better approach is that just go invest in the small case because they have diversified it really, really well. For example, what are some of the other companies in which I have already made an investment? So I've made an investment in Hero Motor Corp. Why have I made an investment in Hero Motor Corp? The reason is very simple that Hero Motor Corp is one of the leading companies when it comes to two wheeler manufacturing space. So they have a massive distribution system already in place. And therefore, I feel that when the EV market starts to take off, Hero Motor Corp can actually accelerate its profitability. Right. So this is one trend based investment that I have done. Now, if you take at Indian Oil Corporation Limited, now many of you will say that, hey, how is this EV? Now, IOCL is actually going to play a different role altogether. For example, the IOCL very recently with Sun Mobility has launched a battery swapping facility. Now, IOCL, as you might be aware that you might have seen a lot of petrol pump that IOCL owns and operates. Now, as the EV industry grows, it will require charging stations. It will require maintenance. So IOCL can get into that business very easily. Therefore, I have made investments in IOCL as well. So the easiest way for you, if you're a beginner and an intermediate user who cannot track their investment is to just literally go invest in this small case. The reason is very simple again, that there is a rebalancing that happens for this portfolio. So there will be experts who will look at this portfolio periodically and drop and add some new stocks into it as per the market conditions. I am a slightly advanced user. So I'm picking individual stocks as I have shown you. So strategy B is that you can go and like me, you can keep on making investments in EV industry. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. That would indicate to me that you enjoyed the content and you would want me to continue to make such videos in the future. So let me know which other industry you would want me to shoot a case study on. I'd be very happy to do it and I will see you on the next video.